we are going for a dive. It is windy, but we shall not be deterred and we will leave the shades on land. <laughs> and what did we see when we were diving? We saw this marine turtle. This is a green turtle. We sometimes also see hawksbill turtles in the area. How to distinguish them? I will go into detail on that a little bit later, but let me tell you a little bit more about the life of these turtles. So these are very placid animals, other than large sharks, which are absent from the area at this point, and humans, which are legally protected from hunting them. They don't have any enemies. So at this point, they're probably somewhat habituated to divers, and they just feed on seagrass. So they're essentially the cows of the shallow parts of the ocean. Seagrass, of course, is not a very high energy dense food. Now, as a consequence, these grow really slowly. They, they are not very deep divers, so I barely ever see them deeper than 10 or 15 meters. They would hang out in the shallows, take a few bites of seagrass, move on. They would uh, never really accelerate very fast. There is no need for them to chase anybody or to get away when being chased. And you can see their main swimming ability is coming from their pectoral fins. Now, which are of course their front limbs, which in evolution got transformed into this, you know, powerful flippers. Why can't humans sustain themselves on a diet of seagrass? Well, we are large-brained, heterothermic, you know, meaning you know, warm-blooded mammals that would not provide enough energy for us. So Matt will have to probably drink a beer after the dive. The sea turtles are often associated with a number of other animals. Here you can see a small fish on the carpus of this one. This is a shark sucker in the family of the remoras. So this is a hydrodynamic parasite which essentially gets a free ride. You can also see a small rest at the back of the sea turtle. Some of these rests act as cleaners, which you know, get pig algae and parasites of the turtle. How do you distinguish between a hawksbill turtle and a green turtle? The way to remember this is that hawksbill is obviously a compound noun with two parts. Hence, the hawksbill turtles have two pairs of plates between their noses and the top of their heads. In contrast, green turtle, one word, one pair of plates. Now the life cycles of these animals are very unusual. They spend most of their adult lives in the ocean. And when I say most, I mean all of it for males and most for females. Now, once they have made it and once the females have fertilized eggs, they would climb onto a beach, you know, they, they would enter dry land for a short period of time and lay these eggs. And then once they've laid these eggs in the sand, they, they would incubate for a little bit more than two months. Interestingly, depending on the temperature of the sand during that incubation period, either male or female turtles will hatch. So this is a real concern with changing temperatures on the planet that, you know, there might be a massive gender imbalance in these animals. 
Once they hatch, they spend a couple of years, and this has only recently been elucidated. They, they spend a couple of years in the open ocean. So this has been termed the missing years, where they would feed on plankton, you know, um, small jellyfish, animals like that. Only then do they return to reefs where they where they hide. And, you know, they might feed on some algae, but mainly they spend their time in seagrass meadows. They can grow really large. They're slow growing animals for sure. Now, we have seen the difference between the green turtles, which are these. These are classified as vulnerable. And the hawksbill turtles, which I have some photographs of, but I actually don't have any video footage of, they are classified as critically endangered. So they're still occasionally hunted and you know, boat strikes and fishing gear accidents kill them. So let's hope that we still see these animals. Now, by now you've probably realized how I roll at the Pacific Clouds YouTube channel. I'm trying to get you to watch the video with uh, some you know, silly humor, but then I'm actually, once I have you, I'm teaching you some real biology. This is also a sea turtle. This one is called Achelon. It is now resting in the Natural History Museum in Vienna which is a, is a fantastic place. So if you ever make it to Vienna, please visit that. This was the largest turtle to ever live. It's over four meters long, and it used to live in the shallow oceans of what is now the center of North America. Now, this is a general trend in turtles that they grow to large sizes. This is a paleoart rendering of this animal by Alice Turner. You can see it's just laying its eggs at this point. So there's very good reason to believe that just as, as living sea turtles, these extinct giants had to do the same thing for reproduction. They had to come on land. It's not clear whether Archelon is a very distant relative to today's sea turtles or whether the last common ancestor of both of these was actually a land turtle. So uh, during the course of evolution, there were several invasions of the ocean by turtles and generally by marine reptiles. During the times of the dinosaurs, the ocean was much more reptile rich than it is now. So I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, see you next time.